Welcome to Electro Online. Here we have our, have our first physics video from the second paper, paper two of the J Advanced Test in 2022. And this one starts out with a bang. The very first physics problem is one of those problems that in no way can you do that in three minutes. I would like somebody to tell me that they actually did. So let's read it. It does deal with simple harmonic motion. It seems straightforward enough when you see that, but let's read the problem. A particle of mass one kilogram is subjected to a force which depends on the position as f equals minus kx in the i direction and plus y in the j direction, with k being one kilogram per second square, a time equals zero, the particle's position is given as such, and its velocity is given as such. Notice there's no force in the z direction, but it does have a position at time equals zero in the z direction. Uh, I mean a velocity, but no position. It's zero position in the z direction, and it has two over pi velocity, and since there's no force in that direction, that must be a constant velocity in meters per second. Let vx and vy denote the x and y components of the particle's velocity, respectively, and ignoring gravity, when z equals 0.5 meters, find the value of x times v sub y minus y times v sub x, and we're supposed to come up with a number, presumably an integer. Wow. So, well, first of all, we're going to need the time when z equals 0.5 meters. And so we know that the distance equals velocity times time, which means that time equals distance divided by velocity. And we know that we're given 0.5 meters for distance and the velocity is 2 over pi. So this simplifies to pi divided by 4. So when time is pi over 4, at that moment in time, they want us to calculate this. We're also dealing with simple harmonic motion, which means that omega is equal to the square root of k over m. And in this case, k is 1, m is 1, so this is simply equal to 1. That at least simplifies things quite a bit. Now we need to find the equations for the position in the x and the y direction. Let's start in the x direction. In the x direction, we can say that x as a function of time is equal to the amplitude times the sine or the cosine, doesn't matter, let's plug in the sine of omega t plus a phase angle. And that would be the phase angle in the x direction and a sub x, the amplitude in the x direction. And we're given some information because we're told that when time is equal to zero, x, when time is equal to zero, is equal to uh, we talk about position, it's equal to 1 over the square root of 2, which is equal to a sub x, times the sine. Now notice when time goes to 0, we just simply have the phase angle left. And notice that this equation has two unknowns, the amplitude and the phase angle, so we can't solve for that. What we can also do is find the same thing, uh, get the velocity, let's do that. The velocity is going to be the derivative of the position, which is the derivative of this equation, which is a sub x times omega times the cosine of omega t, that should be an omega, let's try it again, omega t plus the phase angle. With omega equals 1, that's what we discovered here, and we can then solve for v in terms of time equals 0, so v when time equal to 0 is... In the x direction, it's a minus square root of 2. Uh, that is 1 uh, equals a sub x times 1 times the cosine t goes to 0. So again, that's the phase angle right there. So notice we have these two equations. We have this equation right here. We have this equation right there. If we divide one by the other, we can turn sine and cosine into tangent, and we can eliminate one of the unknowns. So we can write... 1 over the square root of 2 is equal to a sub x times the sine of the phase angle in the x direction divided by this equation minus the square root of 2 equals a sub x times the cosine of the phase angle. a sub x is cancel out and this becomes minus 1 half minus 1 half 
equals the sine over the cosine, which is the tangent of the phase angle. So the phase angle is the inverse tangent of negative one half. So the phase angle equals the inverse tangent of negative one half, which is a minus 26.565 degrees. Now that happens so often that I can't remember that. If you don't remember that, just use it, just keep it as a phase angle, see what happens. If we now draw a triangle of that, so let's see here, we have a triangle. We have a negative 26 degrees, so that's minus phi, that's a, or I should say that's phi, it's a negative 26 degrees. And the opposite side is 1, the adjacent side is 2, or actually this is a minus 1. That's 2, and this is the square root of 2 squared plus negative 1 squared, which is equal to the square root of 5. And we're going to need that relationship to solve for that phase angle. All right, so now we need to solve for a sub x. So let's plug that in here. So we have 1 over the square root of 2 is equal to a sub x times the sine of the phase angle, which is a negative angle. And so it's negative 1 over that. So it's equal to negative 1 over the square root of 5, which means that a sub x is equal to negative the square root of 5 over 2. So now we have a sub x, we have the phase angle, now we have these two equations, we have x and v sub x. Let me write that as v sub x like that, so we don't get confused. All right, so the two equations then uh, for the x direction, so we have x is equal to a negative square root of 5 over 2 times the sine of t, omega is 1, plus the phase angle, which is a minus 26.565 degrees. And if you didn't remember that, just write as a phase angle, and we can deal with the triangle later to figure that out. For v sub x, that is equal to a minus square root of 5 over 2 times the cosine of t minus 26.565 degrees. And so there we have the first two equations that we're going to need in here to solve for this. Now, of course, we need the other two equations in the y direction, so we do the same thing in the y direction, and you begin to see why this problem would take so long to figure out. So now we have y equals a sub y times the sine of omega t plus the phase angle in the y direction. And at time equals 0, we can say that y when time is equal to 0 is equal to position square root of 2, which is equal to a sub y, we don't know yet what that is, times the sine of t goes to 0 of the phase angle. We now get the velocity in the y direction, which is equal to a sub y times omega times the cosine of omega t plus the phase angle in the y direction. And then we solve for that when time is equal to zero. So v in the y direction when time is equal to zero is equal to square root of two, square root of two, omega, oh, is equal to a sub y, omega would be equal to one, cosine t goes to zero, of the phase angle in the y direction. And then again, just like before, we use that trick, we divide this equation by this equation to turn into the tangent and to eliminate a sub y. So we have the square root of 2 equals a sub y times the sine of the phase angle, that's the y direction, like that, divided by this equation, which is the square root of 2 is equal to a sub y times the cosine of the phase angle. A sub y's cancel out. This becomes equal to 1. So 1 equals the tangent of the phase angle. And therefore, of course, the phase angle in the y direction must equal 45 degrees. We still need to find A sub y. So using this equation right here, we can say that the square root of 2 is equal to A sub y times the sine of 45 degrees, 
which can be written as the square root of 2 is equal to a sub y times the square root of 2 over 2. That means a sub y is equal to 2. The 2 goes over here, the square root of 2 is cancelled, so now we have a value for a sub y, we have a value for the phase angle, so now we have the other two equations where y is equal to a sub y, which is 2, times the sine of t plus the phase angle, and v in the y direction equals 2 times the cosine of t plus the phase angle. Like this. All right. So now we have the four equations that we need to solve for this. Now, obviously, I'm running out of board space. We'll erase some things, and then we'll continue to solve for this when, of course, time is equal to pi over 4, because that's the key, right? When z equals 0.5, t is equal to pi over 4. Using those equations, let's figure out what this is equal to. So give me some, a moment here to clean up the board. How long do you get for problem? You get three minutes. <laughs> How many minutes is it so far? Uh, I don't know yet. <laughs> I'll have to think about it. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's a challenge to do this in three minutes. Of course, I'm going a little bit slower since I'm trying to explain how to do the problem. But um, it, nevertheless, there's no way that I could do this in three minutes. It just takes too long. There's too much. It's a, it's a beautiful problem. I mean, whoever thought of it, it's, a, it's pretty clever. But uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's not something you want to put on a test, not this type of test. It's just too, too time challenging, I think. That's just my personal opinion for whatever it's worth. But I do commend the person who thought of it. Okay, so uh, let's solve for this now. We have the equations and time is going to be, oh, I, I erased that. So time is equal to pi over four which essentially is like, think of it as 45 degrees. When you multiply times omega, you get 45 degrees. So let's plug that in here and see what we get. So we have x. x is this. So we get this is equal to, well, let me write it down. So x times v sub y minus y times v sub x is equal to x, which is minus the square root of 5 over 2 times the sine of 45 degrees minus the phase angle, I'm just going to write phi. We'll worry about that later. We'll draw our triangle and do that again. So now we multiply that times v sub y. And v sub y is right here. So times 2 times the cosine of 45 degrees plus 45 degrees. Okay, minus y, which is 2 times the sine of 45 degrees plus 45 degrees. And uh, times v sub x, which is times a minus square root of 5 over 2, square root of 5 over 2, times the cosine of 45 degrees minus phi. How's that? Yep, so we'll write phi instead of that. All right, so now we can simplify this because notice here we have the cosine of 90 degrees, which becomes zero, so this whole thing goes to zero. And then we can simplify that, so let's see. So this is equal to zero, minus times the minus becomes plus, so we have two times the square root of five over two, times the sine of 90 degrees, which is one, so times one, times the cosine of 45 degrees minus phi. So here we have 4 times 5 is 20 divided by 2. This gives us the square root of 10. And this can be expanded out to be the cosine of 45 degrees times the cosine of phi plus the sine of 45 degrees times the sine of phi. Now notice that phi now becomes a positive angle. Right? Phi is 26 degrees. 
because it's a minus angle here, but here we have positive values for phi. So now when we draw the triangle this way, we have phi right here. This was 1, this was 2, this was the square root of 5. And so now we can substitute what these are equal to. So this is equal to the square root of 10 times the cosine of 45 degrees, which is the square root of 2 over 2, the cosine of phi, which is the adjacent side over that, so that would be times 2 over the square root of 5, plus the sine of 45 degrees, which is square root of 2 over 2, and the sine of phi is going to be 1 over the square root of 5. Like this. So now we can factor out 2 times the square root of 5. So this is equal to the square root of 10 divided by 2 times the square root of 5. Times 2 times the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2. And so we have this goes into that. That would be... Um, Two, the square root of 2 divided by 2, so this is equal to the square root of 2 divided by 2 times 3 times the square root of 2. So this times that gives me 2 divided by 2 is 1 times 3 is equal to 3. So finally, we can conclude that this product, when time is equal to pi over 4, which is x, with times omega is 45 degrees, the value that needs to go in here is 3 which happens to be the correct value. Now, how long did it take me? <laughs> to do that? 17, 18. 18 minutes. So yeah, you would be hard pressed to do all this in three minutes. How long is the entire test? Well, you get, uh, let's see, you get three hours. You get about an hour for each section, physics, math, and chemistry. So you get an hour for roughly 20 problems. So you get a little, it's actually 18 or 19 problems. So you get actually a little bit more than three minutes per problem. You just took 18 minutes. <laughs> but I took time to explain it and so forth. So you, if you work hard, you could probably do this in less than 18 minutes. But three minutes? I don't know. Um. <laughs> I would skip this problem, move on to problem number two, and then if there's any time left over at the end, I would try to attend problem number one. And guess. Well, when you guess wrong, you lose points. Oh, I do? Just leave it blank. 